Hello, welcome back to the TT Podcast. This is part two with Clive Padgett. If you've not listened to part one, make sure you go and do so. We, we discuss all sorts of things from Clive uh, hitchhiking in New Zealand to HRC and loads of other things. So make sure you go and check it out. But I want to get straight back into it. TT 2010. Massive year. Massive year. For not only Ian yep. Hutchinson, but the yourselves. World. The world. Yep. I mean... Again, me and Steve were talking to it, uh, talking about it prior to the start. There was a lot of luck involved. But Always. Yeah, you've got to be in it to win it. Yep. And you were in it and you provided the best rider on the best bike for the whole duration of that of that TT. That's right. And was it clear that that could be done? I think when we went to the TT in 210, Ian was confident he could win any of the bike races. He was confident in each single motorbike and his own ability to win any of them. But I don't think any of us ever dreamt that you could win all five. And, I mean, there had been a, I wouldn't say a pattern. Um, Hutchie cycled across in 209 and we we did a deal and um, he did the 209 TT with us and won two in 2009. Finished four races, he actually slipped off on the oil that um, uh, Mark Miller had put down and um, he uh, fell off the superbike. Um, but the other four races, we had two wins from them. So when we went in 210, you know, we'd, we'd learnt a lot that Ian's would like on a motorbike. Because Ian, you know, is quite specific about what he wants, what he likes. Steve will know that. He's worked with him with the, the Taz guys. I keep calling it Taz. I know it's something else these days. <laughs> but, um, uh, and um, and it's, how can I put it? We, we went with no expectations. We never do. My expectations are that the riders all go home on that boat on the Friday night or Saturday or Sunday, whenever they choose to go back. Yeah. Um, and uh, what they do in between, there's never any pressure. My last words to all of them are, Go out and enjoy yourself. Not, oh, you can pick up half a second, half a second there. I've got to find that in the bike. Outside of that, they're pushing themselves hard enough without any, you know, you see some teams giving it, go on, lad, you can have another three seconds, go a bit go a bit sharp, a bit faster. Go and enjoy yourselves. If you're having fun, you'll go fast anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, to come away with those five wins was, was something else. And you say, there was a bit of luck involved. Help a fellas. Um, Connor's were le- Connor was leading the first one and his clutch went. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so Connor was, and he quite some margin. Um, you know, bless his heart, Connor was Connor was away with it, and uh, so you do need to to have the whole thing. You've and again back to the guys that work with me in the team, my friends in the team. We put together some motorbikes that finished all of the laps. Um, Hutchie rode them extremely well. Our pit stops were strong, um, and we came away with the five and. Another thing that's not mentioned because it's often overlooked, we were also involved with Claffy that year on the site car and we won both site car races. So the seven are never mentioned, but just... Um, the the, the only race you didn't <laughs> have an involvement with, it didn't win, was the, uh, was the zero race. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. So, so seven was... W- Hutchie won five, yep. Clive won seven. Claffy. Well, with, with Claffy, yeah, 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 Claffy, yeah, yeah. Claffy. If you pull the pictures up of Claffy on the site car, you'll see the big logos. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so what... A, yeah, it's an, that's an achievement that's not talked about often, but uh, yeah. Was there any point in that week where you thought, oh, we could have? But, like you say, there's no expectation, mm. but there must be at some point you go, actually, the way he's riding, the way the bikes are going, we could get five here. Mm. No, right. but I don't think we think like that. Everybody wants to win, but the minute you count your chickens, you know, the, you're going to get slack, you're not going to mm-hmm. be focused. You know, even when the guys are coming... You know, you, you, you've seen the uh, Cronk the, the Oh, yeah, that, wow. You know, we've got 57, 58, 59 seconds to go, whatever, before they're across the start and finish line. In that time, if you haven't put enough fuel in, they could run out of fuel. They could slip off at the nook. They could slip off at Governor's Bridge. Mm-hmm. There's so much going to happen in that minute, isn't there, Steve? Oh, flipping You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I actually remain in the guys might set off with the stand and they might want to be walking down pit lane either to part Ferme or to winner's enclosure if we're in there but I actually stay in the part Ferme garage until that bank's gone over the line because nothing's set in stone no nope. yeah um, and uh, you know again it's just happened I've seen teams lose races you, you're you anxious in pit lane you want the thing full you know Stivy will tell you you know Stivy's been putting the fuel in our bikes there for the last 16 years and um, I, I will ask him after the second first pit stop probably 10 times before the next pit you put enough in didn't you Steve you put enough in <laughs> and then the same after the second pit stop yeah. you put enough in Steve didn't you <laughs> and it, it's just the will to try and win and be successful mm-hmm. and um, 
so yeah no no it's uh there's a lot can happen in that last mile yeah chris brushed on it in part one uh connor cummins now 2022 flipping heck the fastest ever fire blade lap on a stocker 133.116 pretty mm-hmm. special when is that kid very special or do you think he's going to win a tt he thinks he's going to win the TT, and I believe we're going to win a TT with him. I would love to yep. see it. I really Me do. Too. Twelve podiums to date, uh, six of those on our bikes. Um, and what always surprises me is that. It, oh, and by the way, the lap that Connor did that was on a stocker. That wasn't on a super yeah. bike, by the way. Yeah. Um, and um, people, oh, Connor did well, didn't he? Went under the wire, didn't he? Connor did well. Well, hang on a minute. Think about it. Two thousand and eighteen TT. He had a second and third in Superbike and T- in Senior. 2019, we're on the podium in both Superbike races. 220 and 21, there wasn't one. What's to say he's not going to be on the podium in a couple of races in 222? And of course he was. So mm-hmm. why on earth people ever said, said that surprised me? They're just not paying enough attention. Um, and uh, th- Because that man can ride a motorbike. Um, absolutely That's no think, question. Yeah, he goes... He- he doesn't go under the radar, but he does go under the radar. You always go mm. Hickey, Harrison, and then you always forget to, to put Connor in there. And he's yeah. just, just as quick as so those guys. The last six Superbike TTs are big bike racers. He's been on the podium. Um, so, you know, it's not rocket science to think he might be there next year. Yeah. Um, but, of course, there's a step to make. Peter's clearly, um, you know quite a step up there as is Dean mm-hmm. um, we're not kidding ourselves but there's not some bridge to gap but as Dean's been doing um, BSB uh, Connor virtually did a full season last year missed the last round because he fell down on a motocross bike or a super motor bike came playing in Belgium with Davy and, and hurt himself so couldn't do the last race but um, uh, he has gradually if you've watched through the season, season uh, uh, Connor started off in BSB Super Stock Thousand, and he was three seconds behind the pace, and uh, finishing twenty two, twenty three, twenty four that area. If you watched him at the end of the season after the TT, he scored points in every round, and Brands Hatch um, uh, isn't a great example because he didn't do the last one, um, but your Donington similar, you know, Brands is two point four four miles round, and we earlier in the year we were one point one away from pole. So now as a racer, sometimes one point one is an age, but it's a lot closer than two point seven and three seconds. Mm-hmm. And and Connor's been closing that gap, and um, he's uh, he's made a conscious effort to become faster on the short circuits because a lot of people say they're road riders, you know, they just do the roads. We don't ride on grass when we get to TT, do we, Steve? <laughs> Is it still tarmac? Try, try not to. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's still tarmac. And yeah. that's what always gets me about when people say, oh, he's a road rider. Hang on a minute. Mike Halewood won at Mallory Park, 1.25 miles. But he also went to Isle Man and won mm-hmm. because he could ride a motorbike. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, right now people say, oh, you know, I've often had it put to me, well, what, how would Valentino go? Well, he'd smoke him. He's just faster. Mm-hmm. If, if Valentino went, yep. he would win. If he learnt it, of course. Agostini That's went it. and won, didn't he? Yep. Um, these guys, the higher the level of talent, the faster they will go on a, on a road race track. It's tarmac. Yeah. Whatever the distance is. You know, Barry Sheen might have criticised uh, road racing, but the fastest road race in the world still actually is Barry at Spa back in 1977. Spa. Yeah. yeah. The long old um, circuit at Spa. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, Barry Sheen could ride the roads. Did you ride you know? both there, Clive? Because they changed I, it, bang in your ear when you were did, still competing. I did the last ever uh, spa on the long track, Steve. Yeah. 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 Um, what was so, that like? Um, took a lot of learning. Yeah. I didn't have a great result. It was probably my worst Grand Prix result. I think I finished 17th. Um, but because I was being careful, I wanted to do it next Grand Prix. And it took some learning. You couldn't learn it in, you know, and go fast, go super fast. It couldn't be learned in one one you know, a, a couple of sessions and out into the race. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I hopefully never fell off for all that, you know, that six or eight months <laughs> we were doing them. Um, because you, you've got to use, it, there was a long-term planning goal, you know. I wasn't uh, thinking we're going to win World Championship that year. Mm-hmm. But Steve will tell you, you know, he, he, when he went to the TT to learn, he put so much effort in at flying over there. Stopping hotels in hire cars, doing the laps, didn't you? Yep. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, I'd bump into it on Main Street or something. But, uh, 
two months before TT or whatever. And like a lot of the guys that take it serious, it's why Steve Steve didn't just go there and do three laps and learn the place. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the fact that he won so early after having uh, gone to the island was testament to all the hard work he put in and learn it. He could have stopped at home and given Vicky a cuddle for weekend, but no, he went. Yeah. He went and did thirty laps on the Isle of Man. <coughs> Took her with me. Yeah. Well, they, there you go. Um, oh, I bet you love that. But yeah. but there's a reason people are successful normally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've touched on Connor. It'd be rude not to talk about Dave. I'm a massive Davy fan. <coughs> coming from a, a a very tiny, small supermoto career that I had. Um, Dave, I'm a huge fan of Davy. Yeah. Well, I don't know what class is a career. <laughs> my dad used to pay me pocket money to do it <laughs> there we go <laughs> so there we go I was getting paid for it my dad had, yeah. my dad had keep me in, in tyres at least yeah. um, huge fan of Davies and, and he's a, an, a super talent what we saw at 22 was I think we saw ev every emotion from Davy. I don't know if a lot of people saw it you know um, from the coverage but he had a hard time at the TT 2022 but he also had a lot of fun yeah and I think that's the key mm -hmm. fun uh, you can't not talk about Dave. You know, I think Stuart said to me, Stuart Higgs, you know, he's box office. And he is. He's good looking. I was going to say he's got a girl on his arm. He's got two girls on his arms. Um, you know, and, and you know, I'm sorry, Abby, his girlfriend. Um, but um, he's loving life. He's having so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and whether that be on a snowboard, whether that be, you know, on an MX bike or uh, and so on, it, it's absolutely it's fun to see. It's mm -hmm. fun to be around. Um, and, you know, we we sort of, I once had a strategy. Davy said, come on, can, can we do more? Can we do more? Can I do some short circuits with you? Because, and a lot of people will know this Yorkshire saying, Davy's got no one ass about face um, because he's been known as a roads rider. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, if, you, if they look back, 216, Davy came to BSB with his granddad and his dad and he had two wins in, in junior super uh, stock. Yep. Um, and then they ran out of funds and all the rest of it like people do. So it, his talent was already there. It's just that then his opportunities came with John Burroughs, for instance, on the roads, and, and he went uh, road racing. But perhaps by default almost, you know, it wasn't a path that he chose to take. It was just a way of racing motorbikes. Mm -hmm. And then at the back end of 20, uh, 2021, David, tw 19, uh, 19, uh, 2020 with Honda, yeah. 2021... We decided, we went to a test evening actually, which Honda invited us on to Cadwell. And uh, myself and Dave and Stevie we, and, and Wayne, we were stood there in the paddock at an evening test. First time we've been to a meeting all year. What are we doing? Why don't we go racing? Because each one of us are there smiling our faces <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> what are we doing? Let's get. So we entered the next weekend at Cadwell. Yeah. And um, Davey couldn't make it because he had COVID. But then we did the following round at Snedderton and he was in the points. And then the next weekend, we finished second and fourth at Donington. You know, the talent's been there. And, and we went through and finished those last five rounds of the BSB that year. And we came back this year, at 222, sorry. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't say the rest is history because, it, it, you know, he developed, 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 developed. It was a lovely tr uh, trajectory. You know, we set off at the first round and uh, sixth at Silverstone <clears> and and and... and just gradual, 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 and people saying, when are you going to win one? When you... And it naturally came at Snedderton. We were fairly dominant at Snedderton in, in qualifying and the, the race. Um, and after that, he, he, it showed that we had four wins out of the last six rounds. And I think you have to learn racecraft. You know, it's all right being able to ride a motorbike fast. He mm -hmm. wasn't used to leading a BSB race. Yeah, we're saying he won two back in 216. Yes, he did. But to go out there and lead and set the pace and... You know, where is everybody? Watch my board. Uh, what's happening? Oh, he's catching me. Do I keep pushing? Are their tie going off? Is my tie going off? Um, all of those things. How many laps to go? And and there's a lot other than being able to ride a motorbike fast. The strategy comes into it. And he, 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 clearly at the end of the year, as you saw, that came into play. He, he'd learned such a lot about the whole package mm -hmm. of going motorbike racing. Um, I think racecraft-wise, Northwest 200 and short circuit, he has some big lessons learned there. Yeah, me too. Massive. Yeah, no, incredible. And again, the Northwest, we went to the Northwest. We built the new superbike for the for the roads for both Connor and Davy. Connor was injured still there, unfortunately, because again, he's had a, he had a big off on a motocross bike um, and then fell down at uh, the chicane at Alton Park um, at the second round we did with him. Um, and um, the... Northwest was was quite a revelation. We'd four second places 
incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, broke two lap records, um, and and some very 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 fast and strong racing there, particularly uh, with Glenn, um, with Lee, uh, with Seely, Alistair Seely. Um, and unfortunately, I, I did pull Davy out of the last superbike race. As you're aware, our, our tyre supplier had some problems there. We didn't have any problems in the first race. We almost won it. Glenn won. We, uh, we were second. Um, but I'd choose off my own back. I'd taken some tyres from the previous year with us, not knowing there was going to be any issues, but I knew what had worked the previous year. So in case the new stuff didn't work, I wanted to hide a backup plan. So we ran a previous year's model tyre that um, held up well. Um, but even so, when Dunlop said that all the KR 108s had to be withdrawn, I couldn't leave Davy on the grid. We had to pull him out, and mm-hmm. that was gutting for both of us. But it was the correct thing to do. The guy's got a long career. Had it gone on, you know, down the back straight there, you know, going through uh, church or somewhere, uh, station, sorry, church is where you went down, mate. Um, and um, he, he, he just I couldn't have had it on my conscience that I uh, could let him out there for seven laps. So yeah. we withdrew that one. <clears throat> that um, that <clears throat> shows you the uh, the mindset that Clive's in, where he takes previous tyres from previous years just in case I bet there was no one else that, that decided to do that but unfortunately yeah you couldn't use them in the in that mm. instance anyway and something similar happened at the TT with Davey yeah that's right Davey had a tyre delaminate uh, in the first superbike race we were actually in second and third with Connor and mm-hmm. they, they both went out on the same lap um, and and that yeah, did she, initially it didn't. I went to pick the bike up. Uh, Sue and I drove out, picked the bike up on Sylby Strait, caught for a pint at the Glen, um, <laughs> and and that was partly because I couldn't find the bike. Um, we got back the paddock, and Davy was on good form. You know, he, he, I've been lying third in a senior TT. That's my first chance of a podium. Mm. But then over the next day or so, you know, and if you do interview him, he'll tell you, people oh, that could have hurt you. That could have, you know, and uh, people, other people got into his head a little, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. Um, and he went out in the 600 race on the Monday morning and he came back. We finished eighth. Um, God, mate, I'm sorry. I didn't have full throttle anywhere. I didn't put 100% anywhere. I just couldn't open the throttle. I, 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 I was scared. Come on, let's have a cuddle. And we had a cuddle. And he went down to John's bus and they played darts and um, just got him in a different frame of mind. And he went out in the afternoon and had a much better ride, you know, on the podium, his first podium. Mm. Connor, Connor was second, Davey was third. So... He did manage to put it behind him, but it was it was a big shock, particularly in, I think, the friends around him rather than just uh, fans and spectators that were conscious of it because I don't do any social media of any form. I don't have time for it. I, I, it's not I don't believe in it. I just don't have the time in the day. And I did look, my, one of my daughters sent me something and uh, someone had taken a picture of the back tyre and this made me laugh. And if the man that put it is listening, uh, you know, quite incredible. Oh yeah, I can understand why that tyre went. Look at the rear sprocket, that's rusty. It was a gold, <laughs> it was a gold back sprocket, believe me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, we, <laughs> we, we, we put new sprockets on every two laps. We really do. Every t- could a, be a worse, it could be working for you. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, we actually do replace the sprockets every two laps and um, uh, not the front sprocket the rear one Um, and uh, it just so made me laugh at the time (laughs) because the girls were a little bit dad somebody said we've got a you know I forget if it was Helen or Fiona that sent it somebody said we've got a rusty rear sprocket yeah right Um, (laughs) but it it made me laugh it took the tension out of me Um, I thought what on earth are we (laughs) coming to you know and uh, and we picked Davy up and, and as you saw he went on to have an incredible week um, and of course that podium he was only 2.8 seconds uh, behind a podium Connor got the podium the final podium in the uh, senior Davy was point, 2.8 seconds away mm-hmm. but he also did his best ever lap in that race where most people didn't because it was very windy the conditions were poor in that race yeah. um, and that's what I'd said to him when we got there you know by senior race day you will have done another 40 race laps of the Isle of Man, including practice. So let's not push on the first evening. You know, if it goes well, by Friday you should have enough an idea where you're going a bit more. Mm. Um, and, and that has to build. It, what people mustn't do is put any pressure on him because David Todd's been to the TT three times. Yeah. And he had three years off. Whatever people say, we missed two TTs. No, we didn't. We missed two years and 51 weeks. Yeah. So he'd three years before he'd gone around that track again. And I told him to approach it like he was going again this is just Brand like new. pretend yeah. it's your first time there let's go and have some fun now as a rider you 
always think, yeah, and I know the visor goes down and you're doing your own thing, but at least I've instilled into him that there is no uh, pressure from us. If it takes him another three years to learn it properly, so be it. Yeah. You know? Um, and uh, so, yeah. Just on that um, <laughs> point of tyres, Clive, um, for 2023, for this coming year, British Championship and Northwest TT, Super Sport and Super Stock are going slicks. That's right. And Do you Stanta. think that's going to have a massive difference on pace? Um, over race distance. Do you mean in BSB or the... No, sorry, on the, for, the, for the Isle of Man, because um, we spoke of obviously yeah. earlier about Conrad doing the fastest right. ever lap on a fire blade on the stocker. Well, personally, I don't know. And and that's been the case from the early days. You know, we're going back such a long time, and people are going to say, come on, things have moved on in 40 years. But when Mike Elwood was winning on the on the Ducati and the Suzuki, he was on credit tyres. And I'm not in the past, by the way, we're right in the sharp end. However, a 600 doesn't have enough power as you know yourself steve to really want the extra grip have you ever run out of grip level on 600 no, around there no. no and i don't think anyone else will um and what was missed last year because you know dunlop got a little bit of stick with the, the blip you know uh, that they had with the tire but when you look at philip island the tires provided for motor gp they come in and change motorbikes, you know, you will remember, um, because the tyre wouldn't do race distance. Mm -hmm. We go to Thruxton, we go to Snedderton, uh, Silverstone, I beg your pardon, and they're cutting race distances at BSB, so that tyre provider, tyre, will last race distance. Um, it's, it, it's a blip. The, the, our tyre provider, I still have total and utter belief in. And my, what I was coming on to there was uh, about the tread at tyres. If Davey hadn't had that problem in the Saturday race that highlighted it, Peter actually broke the Isle of Man uh, Superbike lap record by 15 seconds on a treaded rear tyre. He did it on a two, D213 rear tyre. So I actually don't believe that it's going to make a great deal of difference. And something else that brings that home, back in 2010, we're talking Hutchie. Uh, Hutchie did a 130.714. Uh, back in 2.10 on the stocker on the last lap. And that was an unbelievable lap. First ever 30 mile an hour lap on a, 130 mile an hour lap on a, on a stocker. That tyre had done four laps. The super bike lap record at the time was only four or five seconds faster, I think four point mm. some seconds faster. And that was on a slick that's changed every two laps. So uh, there's another example, four laps, 130 point, seven yeah um then the lap record at the time was 131 for the superbike so i actually don't think it's going to have uh, and uh, what's your own view steve well 2022 apart from sidecars every race was won on a treaded tire that's right every race yeah so <clears throat> um and I, I do the believe that there's a possibility that race record might go on a super stock on a slick just for longevity that's right however lap record no that's right. Yeah, I think it won't have a great difference. I do believe you're correct there, Steve. Longevity, yes, uh, but over a single lap, I don't think it's going to make no. much difference at all. Um, but the Superstock race being three laps and not able to change the tyre, uh, which I concur with, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think that last, the edge grip and the drive grip on that last lap from the slick might just have, you know, give it a fraction more. But it remains to be seen. Um, certainly, uh, full credit to Dunlop last year with the 213s. There were some phenomenal lap times. Connor's mm. lap, of course, again on a stocker, was on tread at tyres front and rear. And yeah. fastest ever on a, on a blade as yeah. well. <coughs> we, we spoke about um, you know, your involvement, obviously, 2010 sidecars as well. Um, you know, <coughs> pretty much been involved in all, all the wins apart from the, uh, the zero race. But I know, <coughs> I know you're a sidecar fan anyway. And you help out the virtuals, especially, right. you know, um, so there's a strong presence from Paget's Racing there as well. Um, is that a big part of your season? Yeah, I, I, I love sidecars. I always have done way back from the early days, uh, you know, with Dennis and Julia Bingham, Steve Abbott, Steve Webster, uh, Darren Dixon. Back in the 70s, my dad helped my man call to uh, Frank Illingworth. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's... It's technology, and I love technology. I like being able to make things lap a circuit quicker, and you know whether that be with tire pressures, whether that be with suspension, whether it be with more outright power, um, uh, and and 
you know, working with uh, Ben and Tom, quite something because they operate at a very professional level. And you know, I mean, there are other guys out there, the the founds and the, you know, your um, your, your Ramsdens and so on. We we deal with a lot of the site car paddock, and I, I truly enjoy it. You know. Um, a lot of them are customers but besides that i really enjoy you know you won't find you will find john mcginnis probably going up to watch it but i'll go and watch the start of the site car race i'll listen to it even if we're working in the garage um and uh they're, they're a phenomenal piece of kit and those guys need a slap on the back they are really you know they're top of the game yeah yeah uh, anyone in that side car that 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 side car start list is is yeah Right, they, fact, did, they deserve that respect. Anyone that goes down Bray Hill, if they've had the wherewithal to book that ferry, mm-hmm. put, the, put that entry in, and TT entries are open, by the way, um, <laughs> they have got something about them. That man who finishes last in that race has just climbed Everest. Um, oh, yeah. Fact. yeah. I think I think in the TT uh, film, The Tourist Trophy, that's what um, be, uh, Tom Birchall refers to it as. It's like climbing Everest for a, for a motorcyclist yes. around the TT course. No yeah. question, and, and every one of them needs a huge round of applause. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I th- and I think the fans get that as well. The fans realise just how demanding it is just to cock a leg over, head down, head down Bray Hill. See, I'd argue that I won't, I wouldn't have a go at Everest. Too dangerous. <laughs> That's right. And we didn't practice for that. No, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess hey, so. Yeah. And you don't yeah. get any practice laps for Everest here. No, <laughs> no, one shot far from that. it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just go with this far, and then yeah, yeah, just a treadmill in the in the gym for a few years, and then go up it. <laughs> so let's talk future of TT. Let's talk future of of Paget. Is a an, an interesting question. Firstly, have you have you got your riders signed for this year? Absolutely. If you had a third rider, you could have any rider you wanted. Who would you take? Well, we haven't got the infrastructure to take a third rider. Hypothetically. Um, and I'm not asking for myself here. Quite. Gosh. I think it's lovely to see the youngsters coming on, such as Nathan Harrison, and I believe he's got a, a chance. Um, and in fact, I spoke to Nathan on the phone this morning. He rang me on the way here. Um, and look after yourself, Jane. Jane's in hospital. I hope I'm okay to say that. Take care, love. Um, that's his mum. Um, and I think it's so hard because of the 10 that want to ride for us, I'm going to get kicked by the other nine. Yeah. Um, so I'm probably not going to answer that one. Um, <laughs> what do they say? I've never been to court, but no comment. <laughs> no, um, no comment. <laughs> uh, I think I, and we have talked about it, you know, you Michaels of this world, there's so much more left in Michael. Mm-hmm. And 32 years old and his 23 TT wins. Come on. Um But again, he perhaps wants the whole package. He wants somebody to get a hold of him and take him testing six times before the season starts yeah. take him to five bsbs um and pull it out of him but he he can he's exceptional at what he does 129.4 on a 600 this man will tell you how hard that is mm-hmm. um special uh so there are people out there that i'd love to get involved with to i in my people say how can you make michael better but i still believe that's possible um so there are people that i'd love to just because i want to take them forward yeah yeah um and how can you take somebody forward that's won 23 tts but there's something left in that man he's lovely mm-hmm. yeah um and and of course there are other guys you know you want to help Uchi because look at Uchi, that what he's been through to to win you know at the point he uh when he won the five with us that was the uh, five six seven he'd won eight tts he's come back after mashing his leg up and won a- another eight mm-hmm. and then he injures himself badly again he's he's got fire in his belly still yeah you know so there are people that i really would like to to tell that you can imagine we have a to, to start this season we had a, a list of 19 riders asked to ride for us across bsb and, and the roads oh my um and you know we're really happy with the guys we've got i wouldn't want to replace them um but at some stage we will because and i've said this to david he'll david will tell you if if top Rack's team rings up or you know the honda factory team and world super ring up say hey up can that ladder yours ring, uh, ride for his in wsb i'll book the airplane i'll drive him to airport i'll go with him we'll walk the track and we'll try and make him fast yeah i'll have done our job then and if that can happen that would be lovely i'd still like to run him where possible but i'm i'm for taking riders forward not putting the brakes on them Absolutely. how difficult is it clive because you know um I know every team was speaking to Davey, like you mentioned before, because he's obviously the hot property, really, especially for the future. <clears throat> but um, 
And, you know, a big part of David's season, really, for 23 was he wanted to ride British Championship as well. He's, as you said earlier, and he wants to be <laughs> competitive on a, on a superbike at British level as well. But uh, how difficult is that budget-wise, I mean, to provide him with what he wants for the full season? It's a tough ask. It's a tough ask. I jumped in and, um, you know, told him we'd do it. And we will. And we'll do it at the very highest level. You know, our, our race trailer's 26-year-old, our support vehicle's 2007. But I've never seen them race a race trailer. <laughs> so he will have a brand new, latest, up to spec, the best possible superbike super bike that we can sit him on. And there will be nothing that's not on it. And if it needs it, it will get it. But will we have a new trailer? No. Um, and that. that sums it up. Yeah. yeah. So so we're, we're almost out of time. Steve, we've got quick fire questions coming up. Before, what... what I know. I know you've said this a couple of times. There's no pressure on the riders. There's no um, expectations on the riders. But what would you like to see happen this year for your riders? For everyone to be safe, no injuries, and whether that be on the motocross bikes when they're playing, <laughs> um, or whether it be out there testing. And we're, we're aware that the sport creates injuries. Yeah. You know, and the lads are aware of that. You know, clearly, um, it would be. Yeah, absolutely ideal, as we said earlier, if Connor could stand on the top step. What a great thing. It would be lovely if Davey can be on the podiums at BSB. Um, and, uh, of course, Davey would love to be on the steps at the TT, as would I like him to be on the steps. Mm -hmm. But th there are aspirations that they've all got without me instilling into their mind what the goals would be. They already know what they want to achieve. I'm just there to facilitate it and try and make it happen for them. I mean... What a way to finish. Steve, over Brilliant. to you, mate. Right, Clive, uh, 10 quick-fire questions. Just answer one or the other, OK? <laughs> don't reason. Don't. I don't need any excuses. It's your own <laughs> thought process. One or the other, please. Lager or real ale? Lager. Pineapple or never pineapple, pineapple. pizza? Good lad. Two-stroke or four-stroke? Two-stroke. Grand Prix or race TT? Race bike, actually. You said I shouldn't elaborate, but a race bike. Go ahead. Grand Prix or TT? Uh, TT. Batley or Isle of Man? Isle of Man. Kenny Roberts or Barry Sheen? Uh, I'd have to say Barry Sheen. I know them both. Of course, we don't know Barry anymore. Um, both prolific riders, uh, but Barry was instrumental in helping my short career. Pillion ride with Bruce Anstey or John McGuinness? There's a question. They both come home on most laps. I do say, and you said don't elaborate, but I often talk these days after I watch some of the downloads to, uh, you know, some of the... Uh, I should have said ALB. Yeah, you should, but I'm going to elaborate. Uh, right now, when I answer that question is, if you ask me Peter Hickman, Dean or Connor, I would definitely go on the back of the Connor. I'm sure you've watched the laps. Um, those two is a real... Which one would you go on the back of? Both of those are as steady as each other. Bruce. Or as careful. There Bruce. you go. Um... I'd toss a coin. I'm happy. Didn't give you an answer there, did I? That's no answer. <laughs> no. We can't move forward till you give me an answer. Answer uh, again. I'll answer it slightly differently. I did tell John I wish we I wish we had him when he was 25 and kicked the laziness out of him. Then he probably would have gone on to achieve even more. <laughs> yeah. But he knows that, don't you, mate? <laughs> right, we'll go with John. That's the John yeah. then. Uh, carbs or fuel injection? Uh, we've got to go modern era fuel injection because I'd have a two-stroke with fuel injection on. Here's up or Hickman. I beg your pardon, didn't hear it, Steve. Islop or Hickman? Um, that's very cheeky. Um, I'm going to say Hislop at the minute because Steve wrote for us. 2023 British Superbike champions or senior TT winners? Oof. Wow. Sorry, guys, and I think I can answer this for both of you. I think both Davey and Connor would like to win the senior TT. Thank you very much, Clive. Clive, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure. I, I dare say there's going to be part three, part four, part five, and we'll catch you at the TT. Like you say, not long to go now. As we said, 132 days and counting. That is to the Monday. That is to the actual leaving the grid. Uh, of course, the trailer and setup will be there before then. But, uh, yeah, that's to leaving the grid. We'll see you out there. Ciao. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Mate. All the very best. Steve, I've said it once, I've said it twice, I'll probably say it at the end of every single podcast, we could have talked for hours with, with that man, what an, and I can say this now because he has left, what an amazing bloke he is. Incredible, you know, uh, he never ceases to amaze in all fairness, firstly of how chilled out and relaxed, how passionate he is, uh, in life in general, not just racing. 
But what a great character and what a fabulous person to race a motorcycle for. Oh, I bet. And the fact that he... We need people like Clive Paget in the paddock, don't we? Because he he brings his passion and he's teaching and bringing so many riders through. Without the lights of Clive, we probably wouldn't have the names of, of Davy Todd, Conor Cummins, people like that, would we? I think we're on the same understanding. We just want to take him down the pub, go and sit down with him for two or three hours and a couple of pints and chat and laugh a lot more and get more out of him. Yeah, imagine what, that, what kind of a chat that would be. <laughs> And we've got plenty more star studded guests coming up on the TT podcast. And here's a little teaser of our next guest, Milo Ward. So then I think sort of January time, mid middle of Jan, I got a phone call from Barty. I've like got you a team for this year. What do, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Obviously, yes. This is the greatest call ever. That episode is out next week, and if you've enjoyed this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts.